You're tuned to WNRN. I'm Desiree Moses, broadcasting live from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. Our guest today is Low Moon. Welcome. Thank you. So happy to be here. Go and give him a round of applause. Yeah. You're in, you're in between shows, so we really appreciate you making the pit stop here in Richmond to pay us a visit. Uh, your new sophomore album is called A Modern Life. We're going to talk all about that in just a few minutes, but we'd love to hear a track from it first. What do you want to kick off with? This song's called Carried Away. single day 
Low Moon live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. Carried away off the new album, A Modern Life. We're speaking with frontman Matt Lowell. So Matt, the songs for A Modern Life were actually written and finished back in 2022. The record just came out in February. Um, obviously, the pandemic happened, putting pretty much every industry on hold, including touring and, and this album release. So now that the record's out and you're touring behind the album, did you find yourself having to sort of reconnect with these songs, or did they still resonate with you in the same way they did when you wrote them back in 2020? Um, they still resonate. They resonate more because we wrote the album with the intention of playing it live and then had to wait two years to do it. Yeah. So when we finally got back together to like learn the songs, which is usually what happens, you finish an album and then you're like, oh, right, we have to learn how to play this live. They always take on a new life. Um, and so it's been really beautiful for us to kind of discover the songs more and more um, as we go and as we get to get out there and play it live. Yeah, there's an inherent theme of, of hope in this record. And and I imagine, I mean, me as a listener, and I imagine everyone else listening to the record, you know, definitely relates it to what's been going on around us globally. Um, so when you sort of found yourself coming back to these songs, do you take that new meaning in, in, in light of the pandemic with it? Or, you know, are you still thinking, you know, there's songs about being 16 and, and this nostalgia of, you know, being in your 30s versus being a teenager, you know, do they still hit that way? Or are you looking at it more from this sort of new modern bent? Well, I think they definitely hit that the same way that when, when we wrote the songs and we worked on the songs. But I think just the entire world's paradigm has shifted and we see it through the lens of the pandemic, which I don't think that's ever going to go away, um, to be honest. So when we're, but when we're connecting to the songs, I think it's, it's really about that time and that nostalgia and it still bodes true now, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I think it's just going to stay like that yeah. with these songs and continue to develop from there. Yeah. So you mentioned that you all designed this record with the attention of playing it live. So I'm curious, not, not being a songwriter myself, how is it different going into the studio to write a studio record, which is what your debut record was back in 2018, versus going into the studio to write songs that are meant to be performed and, and built out live? What's the songwriting process like? How is it different? I mean, really the biggest difference is having done 100 or something gigs. Like after you do it and you realize that that's when you feel most connected to the music, then you enter the studio with that mentality. And I think for us, on the first record, we were figuring that out. I mean, we didn't even have Sterling in the fold when we first started the record, our drummer. And so this record, we got into a room and played the songs before we recorded them. Um, and that makes such a difference because the way you feel when you're playing the songs, 99.9% .9 of the time translate onto tape. And you listen back and go, oh, wow, right. Everyone's playing with a feeling or everyone's playing with a spirit. And it's just this thing that you can't really put your finger on that happens when you get in a room and you start pushing air around as a band. And for the first record, a lot of us, <laughs> I think we were just looking kind of like, I don't know, I think yeah. this is good. You know, right. like, but when you play it, a song like Carried Away, for example, when you play it, you're like, that's right. That's, that's what it is. And a lot of that has to, you know, starts at, with the drums and the rhythm section, which we just didn't have the first album, so... Yeah, would you mind go ahead and introducing everybody that's yeah. with you today? Sterling Laws on drums. <laughs> For Santa Baker on keyboards, piano. Hey. Samuel Stewart on guitar. Hey. Now, you did this great feature with Consequence of Sound where you broke down each track on this new record. And so in that feature, I read that Carried Away was actually one of the final tracks that made it on the album. It was a demo, so that you had kind of had in the archives and pulled out. So I'm curious, what made you settle on that one, bring it back out, and it land on the record? I think we were just searching. We had, I think, when the pandemic, well, Sam and I got together, I mean, it, it was probably, what, February 2020? I think it was like a week before lockdown. Yeah, but a week before everything went haywire. And he was like, man, I found this acoustic, these, these chords and this demo. At the time, I think it was called Desert Rose or something like that. Desert Rain. That's a rose. That's a sting song, I think. <laughs> um, and he's like, I think this is cool, you know. And I think like every artist, we just didn't feel like the record was done. I mean, it was done for all intents and purposes, but you're always searching. And 
what was looming around the corner actually gave us the time to go, hey, maybe it's not done. We can still go in on some of these songs. And so Sam and I got together and started jamming on a demo. And then, I mean, the guys had already heard it. So we had been playing it in the van in 2018. So we came with a little bit more of an idea, got together. And that was a really interesting thing because it actually, when we tracked the song, Sterling, we did it in the midst of the pandemic. And we had an engineer and Sterling go into a studio and we were on Zoom. So it was like we were back to like not having a drummer because me and Sam and, <laughs> and, and uh, Santa are like staring at a computer screen while Sterling is like playing drums in the <laughs> studio with a mask. I mean, it was the weirdest thing. Yeah. And um, so we had to kind of finish that song. We started that song remotely and then finished it together, eventually finished it together. But. Now, did the original demo name check Mr. Rogers, everyone's favorite neighbor, did that come no, later? It, it didn't, actually. <laughs> I don't even think there were lyrics on the original demo. Yeah, <laughs> One no. of my favorite parts of that song. Oh, thank well, you. we'd love to hear more of the record, the new album, A Modern Life. We're chatting with Matt Lowell of the band Low Moon. What would you like to play for us next? Play a song called Expectations. This is bigger than the two of us. It triggers. I keep feeling in my gut. Keep my eyes closed. I was too afraid to see Sometimes good friends Are gonna take what they want And just leave When I was 16 I had such big dreams on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond, Expectations, off the new album, A Modern Life. 
So Expectations, one of the first songs written for this record. Um, Matt, you've mentioned that the demo version was a lot slower than you brought it to the group, and now we've landed on the version that we have now. Um, can you talk about the importance of group writing when it comes to songwriting and the, and the input of the band? Yeah, it's it's huge. And um, I don't know, We Sam and I talked about this the other day. There's something about having a, a team around you when you're doing anything in, in life. And I really value that. And I think that, especially with collaboration and art, when other people's perspectives and their spirit and their voice collides with something that, you know, you might start, that's just a seed, and something magical happens. And, you know, collectively we're always searching for that feeling of the four of us and everyone's voice and the way it weaves in and out of whatever I'm saying or, you know, because whatever I'm saying or feeling might feel different to Chrysantha, Sam and Sterling, but they're bringing their voice to that. And so when it comes out the speakers, we hope that you can hear that. Um, and that's when you kind of know it's done as well. Yeah. So pivoting just a little bit, you grew up playing hockey. And I think that oh, that, that team ethos, you know, you kind of have that when you're playing sports and that, you know, makes its way into the band. So I'm a hockey fan. I don't know oh, if wow, anybody really? else here is. Who's yeah. So team? I was Rangers. Oh, God. They're playing tonight. Sorry. This is really bad. I'm a diehard Islanders I, fan. I was going to ask you, who, who are you rooting for in the playoffs oh, right now? I don't know if I can come back here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I, mean, I mean, what you said, the team you said. That's oh, amazing. <laughs> so you, you have that foundation, you know, from, from playing sports growing up. So my question for you would be, you know, you, you had the, the sports side and then you had the art side. How did the art kid win out? <laughs> the the sports side wasn't good enough anymore. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think it it was always like that for me, and and we talk about that a lot. It's like my dueling personalities are where I find my songs. I think, and so I just just leaned into it now, and it's just been a piece of who I am. And I just you know it comes out in the music in different ways. Yeah, you also mentioned that. Um, a book, Fantasyland, made its way into the record as well um, and had an impact on you. Can you talk just a little bit about that, who the author is and, and how it made its way into the record? The author is Kurt Anderson. Um, and it, you know, it's about the history of America and, and how we've gotten to where we are, essentially. And a lot of it is based on false truths or conspiracy theories or what have you. And it's just a timeline of where we ended up and how we ended up where we are now. And to be honest, I mean, not so much the essence of the book and like the material that he's talking about politically, but more so the fact that our lives are a timeline and the things that we do along the way impact or affect where we end up. And so that really made its way into the record. Um, as you can tell, you know, a lot of nostalgia thinking back on, oh, wow, I did that, you know, even the sports thing. And that's why I am who I am. And that book really opened my mind to that. I mean, I guess I had never really thought about that, which is weird. Mm -hmm. I think when you get into your 30s, you start thinking about that kind of stuff. So yeah. that happened. And I had two years to think about it all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love for you to take us out with one more song, perhaps a track that we've been spinning on WNRN, uh, Dream Never Dies. You've gone on record as saying this track anchors the record. Um, how so? What can you tell us about it before we wrap up with that one? I think it's the first track that we've done collectively as a band that we've all felt the same way at, about where we captured the thing that we were searching for. Um, and it took us a while. And um, lyrically, I love it. Um, the, from the demo that we started, it just kept growing and growing. And it's like there's something special about, I don't know, for us as a band, finishing the song, having it on record, it just feels really special to us. So Great. Well, we'd love to hear it. Low Moon, live on WNRN. Long ago, taking roads we don't know on our own, locking eyes late at night, butterflies hold me the rest of my life. And tell me you feel it right. Let this go, what's the use? The more you know, the more we lose What if I said to you, I'll we'll never be Now you know what it's like It's not just me and my right What happened? 
Dream Never Dies, Low Moon, live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. Big thanks to In Your Ear, Paul, Andrea, Carlos, Billy, Charlie, Eric, my WNRN colleagues, Liz and Christina are here. And big thanks to Low Moon. Thank you. Thank you.